In this video, I'm going to teach you how to brute force password logins with Hydra. Hi, my name is Kaiser Clark. I have over six years of experience in cybersecurity and I currently work as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker. And I'm here to help grow your hacking and cybersecurity knowledge. DAC Hydra is a widely used cybersecurity tool used for conducting password attacks. It supports various protocols such as FTP, SSH, and HTTP and is used to test the password strength of remote systems. Hydra rapidly tries different combinations of usernames and passwords to find correct credentials. Its efficiency and versatility makes it very popular for ethical hackers and security testers. This demo is for educational purposes only. Ethical hacking is legal and differs from illegal hacking. Always ensure you have legal permission before performing what you see in this demo. All right, using Hydra is very simple. So this is our basic command here. So we start Hydra by calling Hydra. It's built into Kali Linux. We specify the username with the dash lowercase l flag. In this case, the username is Molly. We specify the password word list with capital P dash capital P. And then we specify the word list. So in this case, we're using rocky.txt, which is also built in the kind of links by default. Then we specify our target's IP address. And then we specify the target that we want to attack, which in this case is SSH. Push enter on this, and then it will attempt to brute force the Molly login with the Rock U word list. And after a certain amount of time, if the password is in the Rock U word list, it will be discovered. Eventually, as you can see here, we got a password butterfly. We can also specify a word list for the username. So to do that, we would do a dash capital L, and then we would specify the word list. And then we can also hard code the password. So if we knew the password for some reason, we could do a lowercase p and then specify the password. So at this command here is brute forcing SSH, but we are brute forcing the username instead of the password because maybe we found a password file somewhere, but we didn't know what the username was and we had a list of possible usernames that we could try and that's what you would do in this situation. And if you wanna change the protocol, you would just put FTP or whatever protocol that you wanted to use. And as with most tools, we can do Hydra H to bring up the help tool. As you can see here, here are some examples of how to use Hydra. And here are all the other options if you wanna get in the nitty gritty. However, you don't need to memorize all these. That's what the help is for. One thing that you might have to use quite often is a dash S. So sometimes like, for example, we have SSH that's not running on port 22. Sometimes SSH is running on port 2222. We would specify dash S222 and then SSH. To give you an example of that, it would look like this. So if we do our up arrow key, we would just specify dash lowercase s and then our port 2222 like that. This isn't going to work because there's nothing on port 2222, but that's what it would look like if you were to do it. And then you can also see the supported services right here. I'm not going to name it all out. You can pause the video if you want to see all the supported services. There is quite a large selection here. And running most of these services is pretty much the same. However, HTTP is a little weird and we're going to get into that right now. All right, so let's say we are on a penetration testing engagement or we're doing a CTF and we see a login form like this and we wanted to try to brute force this. To brute force this, the easiest way to do this is within the Firefox web browser. You can also use Burp Suite to do this. You can also use Google Chrome to do this. So what you want to do is you want to push F12. And then you want to make sure you're on the network tab. And while you're on the network tab, it's basically going to record all the network activity. And now you just want to give us some dummy data. So if we just do like Kaiser for the username, and then we'll do Clark for the password. And then we hit login. And we don't want to save this. And what we're looking for is we're looking for our post. So you can see here, we got a method post. And we got this is our login that we just sent. So if we hit request we can see that we have username Kaiser password Clark. And what I like to do now, it doesn't really necessary for this particular example, because this one's very simple, but there are extremely complex login forms out there. So what I like to do is I like to click this uh, raw button here, and then I get the raw output. And the reason why we want this is because it, we need this for our, our next command. So what you would do is just copy this, and then go put it in your notes because we're gonna use it for later. And here we are on Chromium and Google Chrome works exactly the same way. You would hit F12 and then you would go over to the network tab right here. And then you would just give it some dummy data like this. So we'll do the same thing and then hit login. 
and then all of our requests are logged here. It's a little bit harder to see because you can't see if it's a post or a get request right off the rip. If you click them, you can see like, oh, this is a post. So this is the one that we want. And then what we would do is we would click on payload and you can see there's the username that we supplied and the password that we supplied. And then you can hit view source and then we can get the raw data that way. Now let me show you how to do this in Burp Suite. So let's go ahead and click Burp and load it up. Click on next, use the defaults. We're just gonna start a new project. And then once you're inside Burp, click on proxy. And then there's two ways to use a Burp proxy. You can open the browser like this. And we can navigate to the website here. And you can see it's the same exact website. If we wanna intercept this request, we go back to Burp. We click on intercept is on, make sure that's on. Go back over to our browser, give it the dummy data, hit log in, and then this will automatically pop up for us. As you can see here, we got our dummy data right here. We can copy this and put it into our notes. You can actually install Burp Suite to use with Firefox with the Foxy Proxy extension. So you can see here I got Foxy Proxy and then I have a Burp Suite uh, proxy set up. I'm not gonna tell you how to do that because that's kind of high skill for this. But if you like Firefox more than Chromium and you wanna use Firefox with Burp Suite, I would recommend setting it up with Foxy Proxy like this. And then now if we navigate to the website, we can forward this because our Burp captured it. So forward this, forward this. Go back over to Firefox. As you can see here, this is Firefox. We can give it our dummy data here and hit login and it automatically captures our data there. So that's how you capture a request with Burt Sweep using the built-in Burt Sweep Chromium browser or the Foxy Proxy extension in Firefox. And you might be wondering, why would I do this in Burt Sweep? It seemed like there was a lot more steps there. There was, like I said earlier, it is easier to use Firefox for this or even Google Chrome. However, Burt Sweep is extremely powerful for all other kinds of types of web web application testing. So you're most likely going to have Burp Suite loaded up anyways. So Burp Suite in most cases is going to be easier, especially if you're doing a pretty in-depth web application assessment. If you're interested in learning more about Burp Suite, check out my Burp Suite video right here. All right, so over on my GitHub, I have some Hydra notes for HTTP because I could never memorize this and I try not to memorize stuff and I always put things in my notes. So what I normally do if I want to brute force a web page, I come to my GitHub and then I click copy this first line here and then I go over to my terminal. Let's go ahead and clear this out. This is from earlier. And we will paste that straight from my GitHub notes. So as you can see, it's still Hydra, dash lowercase l, and we're going to supply a username here. And then dash capital P, we're going to supply a wordless path and then we are going to supply a target IP address. Okay, so I have all this pre-filled in. This is pretty similar to what we did earlier. We're still using Molly as the username. We're still using rocku.txt as the password list, and we're still using the same IP address. We aren't using SSH now. We are brute forcing HTTP post form. Uh, there is also a HTTP get form, but this is a post request, so we have to make sure that we specify post here. But keep in mind, there is also a HTTP get form as well that we can use if the web server is using get requests instead of post requests for logging in. And then right here, this is where it gets really confusing. So let me walk you through this. So it's login page path. So to get this, just go to the login page. As you can see, the login page path is just slash login. So we would just copy this and then we would place that right here, just slash login. Now keep in mind, Every website's different. Sometimes it's slash admin, slash whatever the endpoint is. And sometimes it could be a very long endpoint. It could be slash login, slash admin, slash config. You know what I mean? It could be one slash or it could be multiple slashes. But in this case, it's only one. Then we need to paste the request payload. So this is what I was telling you how to get earlier and telling you to put this in your notes. So we would paste that right there in between the two colons here and here and then now what you want to do with it is actually you want to get rid of the dummy data that you supplied 
So in this case, I put Kaiser as a username. We want to erase Kaiser and we want to do caret and then all caps user and then caret again. And then for password, it's very similar. We want to get rid of the dummy data that's applied. In this case, it was Clark. And then we want to do caret all capitals pass like that. And then for the login fail text, the way you get that is you go back to the website and then you give it some dummy data. It doesn't matter what you put here and you just want to get it to whatever the fail text is. So we hit login and this is the fail text. Your username or password is incorrect. So every website has a different error message. You would just copy and paste that error message and put it right here. So let's go ahead and delete that and we will paste the login error message right there. And that is a full command for brute forcing HTTP requests with Hydra. We push enter on this. We should get a correct password of Sunshine, as you can see right there. One thing I will mention about the login fail text is if it has a colon in it, you are not gonna have a good time. So these are separated by colons. As you can see, we got a colon here, we have a colon here. You can't have a colon in your login fail text. So if that's the case, so let's say, I don't know, let's say there was a colon right here for whatever reason. What I would do in that case was I would only paste the first part of the fail text up to the colon because if you put a colon in the fail text, the tool is not gonna work. And then when the tool doesn't work, it's going to look something like this. So let's, let's just give it some bad login fail text. If you give it bad login fail text, it's going to look like every single password is correct. See, it gives us a ton of correct passwords here. If you get a ton of correct passwords like this, you mess something up. Most likely your login fail text. And there's some situations where Hydra doesn't work with brute forcing HTTP logins at all uh, because the login fail text doesn't exist. So there are some uh, web applications that don't have login fail text. And if that's the case, it usually doesn't work. So just keep in mind that not every single login form is going to work with Hydra. And if you get this, um, that is a telltale sign of something is wrong or it will never work. It takes a lot of tinkering with HTTP. Like I said earlier, it is a lot more complex and complicated. Login requests can be very complicated. So let me show you some examples. So you can see it's at slash account slash login.aspx. And it's not just a username and password. We got, you know, all of this, you know, they could put cookies in here and all kinds of other data. I mean, look how long this is. It can get very, very complicated. And actually I would say the majority of login requests look similar to this. You can see I got the user here and then I got the pass here and you have to like kind of comb through it and figure out where the username and password is in the request but you have to give it the entire request otherwise it's not going to work because sometimes you need the cookies and all that other information that's involved with this as well. So that's why I always say you know go into Firefox, Chrome, or Burp Sweep and, and just copy and paste the raw request because it's going to do you a lot of favors because there's no way you're going to get this information any other way this is another example this one's a little shorter but it's definitely more complicated than one that we just did and then the same thing for this one down here there is um, a little bit more complex and that's that's pretty typical with what a login request looks like this one that i showed you was a very simple example but just know it does get a lot more complicated and you need to know how to actually capture those requests either through chrome firefox or Burp Suite. And that, my friends, is how you brute force SSH and HTTP logins with THC Hydra. If you got value of this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. I got a lot more content on the way. And if you're serious about becoming a web application penetration tester, you have to know how to use Burp Suite. And if you don't know how to use Burp Suite or you don't know what it is, make sure you check out the video right here.